When we recently introduced you to the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture, you saw several exhibits of first. The museum features the uniforms of Colin Powell, the first black head of Joint Chiefs and later Secretary of State, and then Jackie Robinson, who broke Major League Baseball colors bear baseball's color barrier, and also memorabilia from President Obama, the country's first black president. So in that spirit, we spoke with five people who were first in their respective fields to learn about that pioneering spirit in their own words. I'm Mae Jemison, and I'm the first woman of color in the world to go into space. Uh, I'm Ernest Green, and I'm one-ninth of the Little Rock Nine. I'm Bob Johnson, the founder of Black Entertainment Television. I'm Admiral Michelle J. Howard, and I command U.S. Naval Forces Europe, U.S. Naval Forces Africa, and JFC Naples. I'm Eric Holder. I was the Attorney General of the United States from 2009 to 2015. Uh, a pioneer has to be a risk taker. You're going to go through some pretty rugged country. It has to be a leader. You're going to have to learn to be self-sufficient. Um, you're going to find out that some people are going to shoot at you, so you better learn to shoot back. The group. This was a period in which change was beginning to occur, change in terms of uh, race and race relations. Your uh, name is Green, isn't it? Ernest Green. Ernest Green, yes. What and is I wanted to be a part of that. Lift off at 34 minutes after the hour. Growing up in the 1960s, it was really sort of impossible not to imagine yourself in space, at least for me. Godspeed, John Glenn. And I thought it was wrong. I thought it was ridiculous that, um, that women weren't uh, involved. I never doubted myself as a little girl. And lift off. For me, the fault was within the system. It was not within me. And we want you to know how proud we are of you being the first African-American woman in space. Why was there a need for BET? African Americans didn't have a television voice to allow them to share their dreams and their stories. I, Eric Lee Holder Jr., from Solomon Square. I was the first African American Attorney General, but I was also a black man who grew up in this, this country. When I was 12, and uh, I saw this documentary on a service academy. I thought, oh, well, that's what I want to do. And I, I certainly was profiled on the New Jersey thruway as a, as a young man, pulled over for on two occasions for reasons that were purely um, almost harassment. And I talked to my older brother, and he said, well, you, you can't do that. The service academies are closed to women. I remember thinking to myself, you know, never think uh, that because of your education, your, your training, um, that your position, in the eyes of some people, um, you just know the black guy. So I went to talk to my mother and she said, no, your, your brother's right. And then she said, well, wait, wait, you're young, you're just 12, you might change your mind, but if you still want to go to a service academy when you get older, and then if you're rejected, we'll sue the government. The paratroopers came three weeks after we uh, attempted our first effort to get in. I even remember a time when I thought, gosh, what will happen if the alien sees this capsule and the only thing they see going up are white males? What are they going to think about <laughs> the world and about Earth? I mean, it was all no nonsense, military, jeeps in front, jeeps behind, uh, soldiers with uh, bayonets. We marched up the steps and I turned the Terrence Roberts, who was one of the nine, he said, well, I guess we're going to get into school today. It was something I'll never forget. Being a first, that you do have a unique responsibility, both to those uh, who made my appointment possible. Older black folks, for instance, who I would see in, uh, in churches or at public events, um, I could see in their eyes um, a sense of accomplishment, uh, a sense of pride. To be a leader of any organization, you should understand the benefits of diversity. The homogeneous teams have different strengths, but if you really want to soar, you'll probably build a diverse team. But I also felt a responsibility to those who um, would follow to make sure that I did the job in, in such a way that their path to the job might be easier than mine was. It's a great feeling to have played a role, uh, the nine of us, 
BET was the first African-American company publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange in 1991. To uh, be able to turn around to our children, to our grandchildren, uh, to other students and uh, have them uh, uh, applaud what we did. And one of the things that I am most proud of, of anything I've ever accomplished, that in business I've created more African-American multimillionaires than anybody in this country who is African-American. And to understand that symbolically all of this has made uh, this country, I think, a better place. You know, when we look at this country, so much of what we've done has been from contributions of everyday people. It's been contributions of people who've been downtrodden. It's been contributions of people who actually were in privileged positions but saw that they needed to do something better. That's the history. That's what we need to understand. Boy, I look at that and I can't wait to go back. The, one of the themes of the museum is making a way out of no way. It's like that Drake song, started from the bottom, now we're here. And it takes you from slavery all the way up to the inauguration of Barack Obama and beyond. And I think it's something else. As um, Dr. Jemison just said, too, the contributions of so many to yes. American history that have gone unrecognized. Yes. I think the museum does a beautiful job of highlighting them, celebrating them, sharing those stories. They said tears and smiles. Her best line, I never doubted myself as a little girl. Mm -hmm. Got to have somebody to show you the way. That was beautifully done. The Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture opens to the public on Saturday. Sure hope you get a chance to go at some point. And be sure to watch on Friday when we'll talk to Oprah, as in Winfrey. She serves on the museum board, and she's one of the biggest benefactors. Do you know her? <laughs> I've met her. I heard she's very nice. I heard that, too. <laughs> <laughs> what I heard.